mortgage broker at U.S. Prime Lending. And today I'm going to be talking to you, talking to you guys about something that I'm very, very passionate about, and it's real estate. So I'm licensed. I'm actually licensed. I have a broker's license that um, gives me the in Texas, in the eyes of Texas, I can actually teach uh, real estate. I can mentor realtors. I can train new realtors and I can supervise them. Uh, so just, I, I only say that not to toot my own horn here, but to let you know that you're in the right hands and you to know that when you learn uh, real estate from me, that it's pretty much, it's, it's you're at the top of the line. <laughs> like there's not much higher you can go other than like a PhD or something in real estate. Uh, so understand you're getting good information. I've been doing it for 15 years. So you're going to learn a few things from me here in real estate. Um, let's see, we've got a couple of questions. I'm going to have a few things going on here in real estate. I'm sorry, online. This is one of my first times doing that. Uh, teaching class. Uh, I've been teaching classes for so many years, but this is my first time doing it online. So a lot of people are interested in getting started in real estate. They don't know exactly, <laughs> they don't know exactly where to go or how to get started. So uh, first of all, what is real estate? Real estate basically has any tangible property, real estate like homes, townhomes, condos, uh, but you can also do commercial real estate, which is you know anything that has more than four units, more than four dwellings. So not like a duplex, which is two, or a triplex, this is three, or a quadplex, that is four. That is gonna be considered a residential type of property. And just it, it, think one thing to know about that is that it's approved through Fannie Mae, which allows only for 20% the regular person to get that type of product. Or even sometimes, I should correct myself, three, even 3%, 5%, or 10% down versus commercial where it requires a lot more down and sometimes experience, but that's a whole nother subject. There's some other things to think about when you start getting into real estate or if you decide to, because real estate can be very, very lucrative. Lots of money, you can make tons of cash in real estate. Um, I mean, it's the sky's the limit. As far as you wanna put into it, as, as much time and energy you wanna put in it, you can make millions. I mean, I'm not just saying that a lot of people get really, really wealthy in real estate. I am semi-retired. I retired at 40, um, just simply because I was tired of being in the rat race and now I just travel the world and I train realtors online. So I decided to try to reach out to some folks and see if they, some people would be interested in real estate and learning. And if not, this is free. So it's not like I'm asking you to do anything. This, you're gonna learn a lot in just this free sessions that I'm giving. And if you're interested in more, check me out at HP Agents or the link below. So let's get, let's see. So we have some different avenues in real estate. Uh, if you want to get in real estate, just don't think that, uh, you know, when you get in real estate, I have to become a realtor. Now, that's not necessarily true because you can do a lot of different things even without a license in real estate. So number one, you could do wholesale. So um, you could become a wholesaler, which is basically looking for something that's extremely cheap. You're going to get a great deal on a piece of property. Uh, let's just say, just for easy type of deal, like let's say it's worth $100,000 and you get it for 60 and then you wholesale it to a, um, to a developer, no, I'm sorry, to an investor. He buys it to you. Maybe he'll take, maybe you got it for 60,000, like I said, 60% of the value. You sell it to him for 70,000, 70% of the value. And now he just does a little paint and touch ups and sells it for 100% of the value and gets all that profit. So there's a variety of things that you can do in real estate, even without a license that I teach here at HP Agents. Some cool things to know. Um, some of the things you can get is you can become an appraiser. So if you, appraisers make a lot of money. And now you do need a license for that. I don't teach that, but I can send you in the right direction if you do decide to go that way. If you're not really that sales type of person, you don't want to get out there, you don't want to put that hustle and grind out there, you just really want to take your orders and work when you really want to work, you can make up to about $500 to $1,000 a day doing appraisals, you can do inspections. There's a variety of things you can do in real estate. Um, and then of course you can do, now we're going to switch over from that, that type of uh, you know, appraisers and inspectors and all these 
you know, little subsidies or something, <laughs> little guys on the side. Not, not say, I shouldn't say little, but you know, people that are not a, directly related with real estate. So you can also become an investor. Now, investing in real estate, you don't need a license. Um, you don't need a license at all. There's some. I teach a course in investing, and it, it can be very, very lucrative. You can make a lot of money, but you also need to know what pitfalls to watch out for because you can get in over your head. I actually went in over my head about, I would say about, two, no, about nine years ago. I mean, it just took the soul out of me. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes, but I learned from those mistakes. I really, really did. I learned directly from those mistakes. <laughs> I mean, I remember one time I was in the shower and I was crying. I was like, dude, I mean, I shouldn't say like, ah! I was just like, oh, frustrated in tears, just like, rolling down my head, you know, I was just like, oh, just so upset. I was so upset at the time, but I learned from that. And I think that when you do fail, and I didn't fail because I made like $300,000 off that deal, but it was very, very, very hard because I didn't have, I didn't learn, I didn't learn the things that I know now. Yeah, that's exactly right. So now I put a lot of uh, front work. Uh, now, when I go into investing, when I go into flipping or new construction, as we are doing now, we're building some townhomes in Edo, about $500,000 each. So we can go that direction and do construction. But the, base, the main thing I want to tell you is there's a lot of things you have to do up front before you get started in investing or new construction or flipping properties because it can be so dangerous financially, emotionally, and even physically. Yeah, it really could. I mean, there's, it's just, it, it, it takes, it takes a lot out of you at heart. <laughs> it takes a lot out of that heart. It sure does. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, I've seen a lot of investors trust like fast talkers and wholesaling. And when you know, there's some, when you're making, when somebody's selling you a property, you don't do your homework and there's a lot of money on the line for that seller or that wholesaler. Then yeah, you know, if he's if he's making twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars, there is really no friends. There's really no friends in in business like that, you know. Uh, only if they have a license, and even if they don't have, a, I mean, if they do have a license, they can put it in the, you know, in the uh, in the fine print and special provisions. I have a license, and you should have done your homework. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can, a lot of little pitfalls in real estate that can really just tear you limb to limb and you just go home crying. I've seen people do it. I've seen people in bankruptcy and foreclosure. I mean, foreclosure, not just in the past, but in the recession, when I just got started, when I, when I got started back in 05, I'm talking about these people foreclosed like last year, 2019, before even COVID-19 came out. Bringing up COVID-19, you know, COVID-19 people think that real estate is not uh, performing, but that's just not true. It, it, it just differs in every every single neighborhood, every single area, every single street almost sometimes. And I only say street because I work at Heights Montrose area. I work this area, and so every street matters. You know. But anyways, it really does come down to uh, putting in that front work, and I think this is one part. This is one part of of learning and continuously learning. And I don't know everything in real estate. I certainly don't want to tell you that. I do not want to tell you I know everything, but I, I'm continuously learning. I know a lot for 15 years. I'm a full-time real estate broker, so I've been doing this. That's all I do. I don't like having another job. Uh, so yeah, this is how I make money is by selling properties in the past. Now I take agents and I train them and mentor them and kind of bring them to high-powered agents. That's what we call HP. HP, help oh, right here, HP agents, high powered agents. That's all I do every single day is I train them, I mentor them, I coach them, and kind of guide them in the right direction because we get off path. I've seen a lot of realtors do one or two things actually, do one or two things. Either they hit the ball rolling, hit the ball rolling when they get in real estate, but they don't take the time to, to set their foundation. They, and what I mean by foundation is that Setting up for the long haul. All they do is get out there and hustle, hustle. I gotta sell this, I gotta make a call. Oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta. And then next thing you know, nothing really pans out. And then they they don't get paid for like two, three, four months. 
Um, and then they just, <clears throat> they seem to go back to their old job. Like they, they can't handle that kind of stress. And it, it can get stressful in real estate if you don't set up your foundation. And that's one of the things that I really, really teach here in, at HP Agents is that setting up your foundation. And what I mean by foundation is like, um, for, for instance, I'll give you one is that your sphere of influence, the people that you really know, not necessarily the people that you're going to, no, I'm sorry, the, the sphere of influence is not going to be people that are going to be buying from you all the time, okay? Don't think that, oh, my friend, my mom, my friend, my barber, my uh, plumber, my electrician, all these people, that these are people, people that you come in contact with all the time. We call that sphere of influence. These are the people that you know, okay? These are the people that you come in contact with periodically. It doesn't have to be every day, okay? It can be, let's say, you know, you see them every week, every two weeks, maybe once a month, but you see them all the time. So we're going to be, with this sphere of influence, we're going to be uh, mesmerizing their mindset a little bit, just the way Coca-Cola and Pepsi and all the big guys do. So, um... It's known, it's a fact that you only have two spaces in your brain. You only have two spaces for any kind of brand or service, okay? You only have two spaces for, let me write that down. You only have two spaces. This is a fact, Google it. You only have two spaces for a brand or a service. When you think Coke, when you think of vacuums, or whenever you think of cell phone, you know, Samsung or Motorola, these things come up. And whenever somebody thinks real estate, they need to think you. Whenever they think investor, they need to think you. Whenever they think, you know, I need to build a new house or remodel my home or I need to, you know, do my taxes. I need to do whatever service you provide. Whenever they think that, they need to thank you. <laughs> so you, I'll, I bring that up because with the sphere of influence, the people that you know, the, remember, these are not the people that are going to buy from you necessarily. Not necessarily. These are not going to be the people that, you, that buy from you necessarily. But what they will be is going to be people that will continuously refer business to you. And why do you say that? Not because you're, you're nagging them all the time about, hey, do you know anybody? Do you know anybody? Because you don't want to be that type of person. You want to be the type of person that's actually offering value. <laughs> you become the go-to guru in real estate. And that's what I train you to do. Like yeah, keeping you up, making sure that you are the number one person. And when they think real estate, they need to thank you. And it's so important because you're like, ah, well, maybe, you know, I can, I heard I can buy leads off the Internet. And yeah, they're great. You know, you can buy leads off the Internet. It's fantastic. However, they're only if you do the, the research, only 20 percent will, will actually do business with you, sometimes as low as 10 percent. So what does that mean? That means for out of 100 leads that you get, 100 leads, all kinds of calls, all kinds of work, all kinds of emails that you've done, all this work that you've done, only 10% will actually pan through. And then they have another conversion rate that we talk about is the closing. You know, they're actually closed. So yeah, they want to do business with you, but now we have to actually make this into money. You know? <laughs> Yeah, okay, they want to do business. Now we got those 10 out of 100 leads. You've got 10 that want to work with you. And then those that close will probably be, let's say, 50% of that. So now we got five. We got five closings out of 100 versus, let me tell you this, out of versus a sphere of influence. The sphere of influence, the people that you know that, that, that referred you, people that referred you. They're up to 70%. That means, I mean, 70, I mean, mines are up to about 80 or 90%. When somebody refers to me, it's done. You know, like, hey, I, you know, we close this deal down. So what I mean, well, let's, let's put the numbers in into back retrospect, back into perspective here, okay? So now we got 100 leads. Well, and I, get, I close about 90. My conversion on a referral is 90%. So if that person who's referred to me, I usually close them down. So that's 90. And I have 90 versus the, the leads online that you have to buy, you know? So I take 90, then my conversion rate, the ones that actually close, the ones that actually close the deal that make me money, not just working and working on Saturdays and Sundays, 
No, the ones that actually close the deals are probably about 70% of that 90. So I'm about out of 100, I get 90, right? Then 70% of that, I probably get 70. I'm not, I'm not a mathematician here, but 75, 80, 80 of them will actually close. You see, now, of course, I don't get that many referrals every single month, but I want to say I get probably 10. So if you do that, you get 10, and then let's say, okay, then I got eight that actually want to do work, and then, okay, I got like five, six of them that are actually close. Oh, excuse me, hold on one second. I got, let me pause this real quick.